video, I'd like to explain what it means to eliminate the parameter with regard to parametric equations. Uh, so to do so, I want to show a quick little demonstration with Desmos. Uh, in this demonstration, I'm going to show a race uh, from the starting point here at 0, 0 to the finish line over here at 2, 0. Uh, we're not going to race along a straight line. We're going to race along uh, this parabola. And actually, it's not going to be us racing. It's going to be uh, a bunch of snails. So here's Gary uh, at the starting line. Uh, and then here's a black and white version of Gary also at the starting line. And here is a bizarro world version of Gary. Uh, he's not at the finish line. He's kind of at the top of the hill. Uh, so these three snails are going to race to 2-0. And they're going to need to cross the finish line, not just get there. Uh, we're going to see who gets there first. And the idea of this whole thing is uh, to demonstrate that uh, different parametric equations can trace out the same exact curve, uh, but they could do it maybe a little differently. Um, so without further ado, I'll start the race. Here we go. So Bizarro, Gary's off to a lead, but wait, he turns around, he's going back. It looks like now he's headed backwards. Black and white Gary's about to win. He crosses the finish line, he wins. Now it's a race between Bizarro, Gary, and regular Gary. Regular Gary looks like he's going to be it. No, Bizarro's got him. No, he's turning back around, and he loses the race. Okay, that's the end of it. And as Bizarro, Gary goes back and forth... <laughs> over and over, oscillating between the starting line and the finish line, I think I could spend a few minutes explaining exactly how those parametric equations played out. So if you thought this video couldn't get any weirder, now I'm going to pop up into it and start explaining a few things. The red curve here is the quadratic negative 1 fourth x times x minus 2. And all three snails traveled along that path, but they traveled along it differently. So what I want to try to explain is why those different parametric equations followed that path, but also why they moved along it differently. So I'll number my snails 1, 2, and 3, so we can kind of keep track. I'll write a set of parametric equations for the first snail, which is regular old Gary. Um, the equations that I use was x1 equals t. Um, so that the horizontal displacement was the exact same as time. And y1 equals negative 1 fourth t times t minus 2. Uh, and you can see that we could just substitute in that y1 equation. Uh, in place of t, we can sub in x1. And I can drop the subscripts, the 1s, uh, and the equation will become y equals negative 1 quarter x times the quantity x minus 2. Uh, so it's pretty clear to see why that first equation followed the path. The second snail, this is the black and white version of Gary, I used x2 equals 2t, and y2 uh, was a little different then. y2 was negative t squared plus t. Okay, so uh, I can show here through substitution that it'll follow the same path, but in this case, I'll have to solve the first x2 equation for t, and that'd be x2 divided by 2, and then I'd sub in x2 divided by 2, where I see uh, a t in the y2 equation. Um, and of course, I can drop the subscripts again, so this will just say y equals negative 1 quarter x squared plus 1 half x, uh, and of course, if you factor out uh, a GCF of negative 1 quarter x, that'll leave you with negative 1 quarter x times the quantity x minus 2. So once again, it's following along the same path. The third snail, which is Bizarro Gary, is the really weird one. That's the one that's bouncing back and forth uh, between the start line and the finish. So for that one, I use the equation x3 equals sine of 5 pi over 4t plus 1. And there's a separate video especially about uh, parametric equations involving trig functions, uh, but they're useful in showing this, um, I guess, the sinusoidal movement um, of the snail in this case. So for y3, I used a quarter cosine squared times 5 pi over 4t. And I want to show why this makes the exact same path as the others. 
So to solve this, I had to do it a little differently. I actually started with the y equation. Uh, and instead of cosine squared, I thought of cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared using the Pythagorean identity. Um, and then I said, okay, sine squared, how can I use substitution to get rid of that sine squared since the goal in these problems is to eliminate t? So I went back to my x3 equation and I saw that x3 minus 1 was equal to sine, which means x, x3 minus 1 squared would be equal to sine squared. So I sub, subbed in x minus 1 squared where I saw a sine squared, and then I just simplified. Uh, so I got y equals 1 quarter times, uh, when you work out the uh, details there, you get negative x squared plus 2x, and when you pull out a uh, negative x, you get y equals negative 1 fourth um, or negative 1 fourth x times x minus 2. So all along the same path. Um, in a future video, we'll see how you can kind of change the frequency of the sine curve to adjust its speed. Uh, I wanted to make it end at the finish at different times, so I just kind of played around with it and came up with the quantity 5 quarters pi. Uh, but any sinusoid would cause it to bounce back and forth along that same quadratic path. So the important thing to see from all of this is that there are many parametric equations that can follow the same path, but they'll do it differently. And that's what makes parametric equations so powerful is they can incorporate time uh, into these graphs of position. So we can think about where an object is along a path at a different time. We could think about objects moving faster or slower. We could think about time measured in different units and all of those things. All right, thanks for watching.